Dearly beloved, praise the Lord, and God remains our Father in heaven, and we appreciate him for the opportunity he gives us to interact with his word. And I just want us to begin with a word of prayer. Father God, in thank, we thank you very much for this time. Thank you for the opportunity that you give us to interact with your word. We pray that you bless us as we continue considering the life of the man Elijah the prophet. Father Lord, shall we shall be impacted for your ministry, and that we may find you more and more. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brethren, we started our journey again on a man in the Bible called the man Elijah, prophet Elijah. Remember in Hebrew, Eliyahu, the Lord is God. The Lord is my God. My God is Yahweh. And so we continue our interaction. And this time we interact with a still small voice. Elijah the prophet in chapter 19, God calls him and gives him instructions as to what the next step should be. And he gives him food to eat by his extraordinary means. And he uses the, uh, his extraordinary means to feed the man Elijah. And Elijah eats the food. And the Bible says that he goes for a journey 40 days and 40 nights. And so the Bible does mention that he was given food to eat and with that food, the energy he attained from the food, he moved 40 days and 40 nights. And from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 7 through to 9, and then eventually continue on to 13, you read about this man engaging with the food and he moves on a journey from where he was to Mount Horeb. And the journey, the Bible says, took him 40 days and 40 nights. And now let us concentrate on a still small voice, how it came about. And we read from chapter 19, verses 11 to 13. And so the Bible says, dear brethren, and says this, that then the Lord God said to Elijah, Go out and stand on the mountain in the Lord's presence. At that moment, the Lord passed by. A great and mighty wind was tearing the mountains and was shattering cliffs before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After, he, after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a voice, a voice, a soft whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Brethren, this is the word of the Lord, that Elijah had so many encounters. Remember the wind, remember the earthquake, remember the fire, but the Bible says that God was not in any of those. And what the Bible says is that in verse 13, he had a still, small voice. And immediately he had the voice coming from the Lord, he covered himself and came out. And so this is something that I desired that we share about when God makes a whisper, when God speaks in a still small voice, when God whispers, what does it mean? And you know, we are living in a world full of wind, full of fires, full of earthquakes. There are so many things that make a lot of noise and they interrupt. But is God in those noises? Is God in those bombardments? The Bible says that Elijah considered listening a little bit more. And God dispensed himself through a still, small voice. And what it means to us as believers who are living in similar generations, and just like I did mention previously, what Elijah went through, the moments of Elijah, the encounters that Elijah had with God, they actually teach us a lot more. Now, like in this still small voice, 
the Bible teaches us lots that actually when God is whispering, number one, that it is a personal talk with him. So it is personal. It is for you. That actually when God is speaking, and remember, we're in the program, Finding God. And as we find God, how do we know that God is speaking to us? And so a whisper is for you. So Elijah had very many public encounters. We know he had just been before prophets of Baal. And you know, there was a public encounter. And you know that Elijah had just experienced the wind breaking the rocks. Elijah had just experienced the fires, the earthquakes. But now, a still small voice, he had it in his ears. And so it was a personal encounter. And so, in this case, friends, in the cave where he was, it was a personal encounter that Elijah had with God. And so our time, friends, as we interact with so many things, we desire this personal encounter with God, a whisper. And maybe as he whispers, lots more things will happen in our life. And so we are living in a generation that is like that, but you need a whisper. I need a still smaller voice that comes from the Lord. Number two is that when God whispers, the whisper has a purpose. Remember the wind, remember the, the earthquake, remember the fire, remember all these things. But the whisper had a purpose and it came on purpose because Elijah had been depressed. Elijah had been dejected. Elijah had been scared. Elijah was left alone. And so this whisper coming, it was on purpose that actually it was an encouragement that Elijah needed at this moment in time. So in the cave, God wanted to speak a personal message to the prophet. The one that had been dejected, the one that had been depressed, the one that had been scared. And now here, God speaks a whisper on purpose so that his ministry continues and so that his presence, Elijah feels it more and more wherever he was going. And so that God, God would meet his personal needs. And so as a person, you need a whisper and on purpose that God will encourage you. Many times we get depressed. Many times we get anxious. Many times we get scared. Lots of things happen. For Elijah's case, of course, actually everything was against him. The king Ahab and his wife Jezebel, they were all against him. And, you know, he had just killed over 450 prophets of Baal and he was on the run. And God gave, gets, gets him go to Mount Horeb. And on the Mount Horeb, this is when he finds this personal encounter, which was on purpose. And so, friends, God was directing the paths of Prophet Elijah. God was directing the footsteps of Prophet Elijah. And so, God gives him the next step. Now, you and I need God's guidance, need God's direction for the what next. And you need this purposeful whisper that God speaks that he may whisper in your ears. And so friends, this is very, very important. And so I thought that actually in finding God, we need to be on purpose. And God is whisper, he's always on purpose. And like in chapter 19, when we are reading verse 13, that there was a still small voice. You need it, I need it. And so that actually we come down, the depressed people, the scared people, the frightened people in this generation that is so soiled and we need a whisper that God speaks directly in our ears. And now another thing is that actually God's whisper remained powerful. Although he had just seen rocks shattering, rocks breaking, he had just seen the fire, he had just seen the earthquake breaking the rocks and things like that, but this whisper remained powerful because immediately he heard it, the Bible says, he wrapped himself and came out and God was directing his footsteps. And so, friends, even when there had been an earthquake, even when there had been fire, even when there had been wind, the whisper was powerful when it was at a personal level and when it was on purpose. And so he covered his face and came out. So when God whispers, friends, it is for our ears. Praise the Lord. That when God whispers, it's for our ears. So endeavor to catch every word. Just like you have a friend that is whispering in your ear, you pay attention to catch every word. And God 
is our friend. Remember the song, what a friend we have in Jesus. And so he's a friend that whispers in our ear. And so endeavor to catch every word this season. Endeavor to catch every word that God speaks. Endeavor to catch every word in a whisper. And therefore, you need to sharpen your ears. Friends, I just want to appeal to you that during this season, during this time of so many noises, we need to sharpen our ears. What is God saying? And it is a serious matter because <laughs> there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of many, many things that are, you know, are diverting our attention. We need to sharpen our ears to catch every word. A whisper, purposeful, a whisper, powerful. And therefore, I call upon us, I call upon myself and I call upon everyone that you need to sharpen your ear to catch every word that comes from a whisper because God is our friend. And you remember also that a whisper comes with peace. And so God is whisper is for peace. It quietens us. A message that is clear comes peacefully and calmly. And so God desires that you and I peace. Take a moment and train your ears. Take a moment and train your body. Take a moment and train ourselves to come down and listen and be at peace sometimes. Sometimes we are boog boog, we just keep running about very many things, you know, overtaking us. But the thing is, we need to come down and be at peace. May the Prince of Peace quieten our souls. May the Prince of Peace quieten our homes. Because sometimes even in our homes, there is a lot of noises, so many things that actually divert our attention. And we pray that actually he is our peace. So God made Elijah in his brokenness with the tenderness, a still smaller voice. Now, may God help us for we, with a whisper. Sometimes you come home, maybe your husband or your wife or, or whoever you are. A lot of shouting, a lot of noise, a lot of many, many things. But many times, even at our personal level, we need a whisper for peace. Speak softly, speak kindly, speak, you know, quieten a little bit. And so that actually someone you are talking to will catch sense in what you're saying. But sometimes we do a lot of shouting and, you know, like earthquake, like fire, like, you know, like wind, blowing the words here and there. But the point is peace. And so this still small voice, God met him, met Elijah where he was. And so I just want to appeal to us that actually we are in God's image and we need to catch on. We need to carry on and bring peace. Are we human beings in our various environments? We need to, a whisper is for peace. And when someone knows that you are speaking quietly, you are speaking calmly, will sharpen their ear. And so we need peace. We need calmness. We need quietness. At night, when you are sleeping, you need quiet. And then you rest. I mean, and the reason why God appeared to his people in a dream and he speaks tenderly to them. And even in the children of Israel, who called Moses up on the mountain so that he could speak tenderly. And though, so in this world, where there are lots of things that are, you know, that are damaging our ears, we need somebody, a God that will speak tenderly to us. And so you need to speak tenderly to one another. And so the whisper was intentional. The whisper was meaningful. And we are looking for meaning in all these things. Whether you are speaking with a friend, whether you are speaking as a family man, a father, a mother, be intentional, be on purpose, be meaningful. God was meaningful in the ears of Elijah, in the midst of depression, in the midst of anxiety, in the midst of scare. He needed this intentional, this meaningful talk. And so friends, I'm just winding up here, but asking us that from this whisper, May we sit down and read a little bit more in this chapter 19. What, what is God speaking to you? Quieten your heart. Quieten your mind. Lay your emotions before the Lord. Cast your anxieties upon the Lord. For in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 17, cast all your anxieties onto him, for he cares for you. So cast your anxiety, 
quieten, slow down. And in this generation, these times, we need to slow down. Where there are so many noises, we need to come down. And then we wait for God's direction. And the direction that God gave, Elijah followed. And so this is the meaning of what it means, of what it is saying here. Guiding for our next step. I have found many times myself, you know, caught up between many, many things. Confused sometimes scared sometimes, depressed sometimes, but we need God's guidance for what is the next step. So in finding God, you find peace. Elijah discovered a whisper and the whisper was for peace. And so this is showing us that the story is not yet over because God is directing him and he's showing him the, the next step to take. So friends, the God who has started this good work in us, continue it and proceed it, Proceed it and complete it. For we need to know what the next step will be. Elijah wrapped himself and came out and listened more. And God guided him. And in our next episodes, we shall see that actually the man is still, the work, God's work is not complete. And we know that actually even when we are here, the God's work is not complete. We only need to hear a whisper for direction. May God who has studied this guide you through and guide me through that we shall keep walking according to his guidance. God's name received the glory like it was with Elijah. May it be with you, may it be with me, may it be with you. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.